Okay guys, so we have made it to the final part of my testimony. I should have been filming my testimonies because a four part testimony is insane, but I just went through so much in my life and that's just a, a testimony to the fact that I have made it through so, 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 so much. Something I wanna talk about is one time when I went to, and this is gonna be relevant to LA, um, when I went to church with my friend's mom, and she didn't even go, I went to with my friend's grandma to a church and there was this lady there preaching because her husband was sick at the time and she preached about palm trees and how palm trees bend but they never break and how they can weather any storm and they're not like an evergreen tree or a tree that can easily knock over in a tornado in a storm but they just bend and they bend and they bend and then when the sun comes out they back standing strong um and that resonated a lot with me even though i had never seen a palm tree in my life in sixth grade i never knew what a palm tree you know i knew what it looked like but at the same time i didn't know what it looked like i knew what the even though we didn't have emojis but i knew what the emoji looked like i knew what a, a drawing maybe of a palm tree looked like but a palm tree just wasn't a tree that i was familiar with i was more familiar with evergreen trees and trees that were closer to the ground um and that that were just like older and i knew about the the ages of trees but i knew nothing really about a palm tree but coming to la i feel like it became full circle and this this moment like just was up in my spirit and i was almost just like overwhelmed with like full circleness um so i plan to go to la um and i post on social media like i'm gonna move to la and one of the girls um who has modeled for me tells me like oh we should be roommates or whatever like i'm my roommate situation out here is kind of bad um they're bullying me and she's disabled so i'm like okay they bullying you um i don't want them bullying you um and we have had a previous situation um which i skipped but where one of my <laughs> one of my um uh, hairstylists in the shop had put her in like a threatening situation because they were threatening me um they were upset because she was supposed to she, basically one of my stylists used my hair for her client and then she got mad at me because i was mad and that made her upset and sad so she ended up bringing her cousin up there because i was walking around upset and that made her upset and she don't like when her cousin is crying so they was talking about how they was gonna beat my ass so anyway, while they were saying that they was gonna beat me up and all of this stuff, the girl who is disabled, um, she don't have like hands or like legs to defend herself. So she felt like out of place and I understood that. So I already felt like it was my duty to protect her because I had already put her in a situation. So I'm like, oh, she wants to live with me and people are bullying her. I definitely want to like protect her and make sure that she okay or whatever. Um, so I'm like, yeah, we could definitely live together or whatever. I'm like, um, would you be cool with like, since you out there already like getting a lease, like finding a place and signing a lease already or whatever. She was like, yeah. And I'm like, and I'll pay the deposit or whatever. And she was like, she's not going to move into next month anyway. So she'll just pay like when she get there and she'll pay her half of the deposit or whatever. I'm like, okay, cool. Sound like a plan. So she going to find us an apartment. So she going to find us an apartment. And, um, to my knowledge, it's like, um, a huge i don't know i i think it was a one bedroom yeah to in my knowledge it was a one bedroom or whatever so when i get there i'm dealing with the cat situation i had nobody to take my cat my sister um texted me while i was on the plane like i'm not taking these cats you're gonna have to figure out something to do with them it's my birthday mind you the day that i'm moving so i'm texting everybody on instagram i'm trying to figure out what to do with my cats because my sister basically saying she's not gonna keep my cats until i can come and get them or whatever and it was just like pissing me off and then i'm telling her like oh i accidentally left my grandpa who passed away i left his jacket in the house and she don't want to go get it because she feel like she went and got all my other stuff all my other decoration but she didn't want to go get my jacket because she felt like scared because i didn't pay before i left y'all i definitely left without paying allegedly allegedly i was not i for me personally i know a lot of people pay shit that like bills that come that don't make sense that you're not supposed to be paying if t-mobile ever send me a bill like people be saying they t-mobile bill too high t-mobile won't get no money from me if 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 it's a bill that i get that's not valid i'm not paying so she was just like, I don't want to, um, you know, I don't, I'm like, she was just feeling embarrassed or whatever. And she was just like, I don't want to go in there, but she still went and got all of my decor and decorated her apartment. So I always, you know, kind of held that little grudge against my sister or whatever for that. But 
uh, what can I do? I just will never see my grandpa jacket again. And that's the only part of him that I had. So it definitely hurt my feelings. Um, and it definitely hurt to not have that. And I definitely, you know, feel some type of way about that since this day. But what can I do? You know? Um, but she also told me like she wasn't going to get my cat. So it was like just like a whole like stressful ass day of me trying to travel and move to another city. And just like, it was just like real stressful. So I get to LA and I Uber to, um, our apartment and like i said she said she wasn't gonna move in y'all she's already moved in and not only is she moved in this ain't a one bedroom it's a studio so it's like a wall that divides the living room from the room and she moves into the room and she got her bed in there and everything and i'm just like okay i mean i don't have a bed yet so i guess it's nice that she got a bed because we got somewhere to sleep and like we ended up sleeping together for the first few days but after a while like you could just tell like she didn't want me in her bed or whatever like after like a, a week or two um like you could just tell like she didn't want me in her bed so i literally had i was like hustling y'all i so i i didn't sell my stuff i don't know why i didn't sell my stuff i don't think back then i was just up i literally decided to leave houston and go to la within seven days like i'm a big like i make big decisions in a quick time same way you know mexico wasn't that quick but with la to houston it was seven days it was overwhelmingly on my heart i feel like god put stuff on my heart um and he tells me to go a lot of people f look at it as like fleeing but for me it's kind of just like i did all i could do and like let's move on i don't have an eviction on my credit because i wasn't technically evicted like i just left uh, my lease was technically up at the end of that month anyway because it was the end of the lease from before and like i said i moved there on august 3rd i left on august 3rd that's one year so my lease was up um and i just didn't pay that thousand dollars that i owe um for a new deposit i wasn't paying that shit <laughs> like why would i pay a new deposit if you already got a deposit anyway um anyway um yeah so yeah she was she like i don't know she took the room and that was already weird to me i had paid the deposit and i had paid the first month's rent she didn't pay no rent even though she wasn't supposed to be moving in because she told me she had just paid rent at her other place and she was just like she couldn't stay there no more but she gonna pay the rent for next month and i you know i was kind of confused i'm like okay this doesn't make sense or whatever um and but she just was weird or whatever i ended up like buying an air mattress or whatever after a while but I had came there with nothing in my suitcase but some sunglasses, um, some shipping stuff. Like I really didn't have much, but I had enough to like sell merch. So when I, as soon as I got there, I got on my Instagram story and I did like story sales and I sold everything I could so I could make money. Um, and I was happy. I was there. It was my birthday. Um, at this point, I started smoking. I had anxiety, so I started smoking when I got to Houston. I didn't smoke Chicago, but I smoked when I got to Houston. Um, I had anxiety, so I was like smoking. Um, I smoked a little bit in Chicago um and yeah I was like smoking and I was like enjoying myself or whatever but me and her was just like kind of in like a little odds I just started to notice like she might be not being truthful about the situation with her and her roommates and um like she might actually be the bully because one day um I had my glasses like I had all my shipping labels on the ground with glasses on top of them and I got pictures of this stuff too um and I was like I had the glasses on top of them as I was taking story orders. I was printing out the address label and I put the sunglasses on them and I was going to buy bags to put the bags in because I don't even think I had no more bags at this point. I was selling out of stuff. I was walking the fashion district. The first days I was there, I was walking the fashion district. I was so happy to be there. I was so happy to um, discover fashion district and actually get to be there when this is something. As a little girl, when it was wet seal, I used to look up the clothing vendor names and I used to find the vendors and it would say like LA and I was like so excited by that. Like this is something that was full circle for me and it was like so major for me and I just felt like the situation at home was kind of taken away from that but I wasn't letting it because at the same time I was so excited to be in LA and to be like living out my dreams but at the same time it was like this shit at home was kind of weird um I was buying like Little Caesars pieces and like it was like we were sharing but like I was always paying for shit like it was kind of almost the same situation that I had been in all of this time like I'm constantly taking care of people taking care of people taking care of people but nobody's taking care of me like people not looking out for me but I'm looking out for everybody else and that's how I keep on ending up in these situations where I don't have it for myself and I don't got extra and I can't throw money at my problems because my money is in everybody else's pockets um I, I was feeding her I was giving her you know drinks and this and that because that's just the type of person I am. 
Um, so I ended up seeing that this situation really wasn't going to work out. So I ended up making a contract and got pictures of this too. <laughs> um, I ended up making a contract basically saying like, um, uh, I had 90 days where I could move out because it was kind of like she had took over. Like she didn't want my cats to come. So she had told me like my cats couldn't come, which is crazy again, because her name was on the lease, but I'm the one who paid the deposit in the first month. So I'm just like, she was like, you, I don't want you to have no cat, but she ended up getting a dog. Like it was just a lot of stuff. Oh, but my point was I had the sunglasses and the labels down and she ends up moving them, not, not moving them individually, but just pushing it all to the side gathering it up and pushing it to the top so she could take pictures in the living room because she's a model so she could take pictures in the living room which was technically my room because she took the room even though she ain't paid no rent or no deposit but your roommates was bullying you no i don't believe that i think that you are the bully and that you use your disability to um look like you're not the victim and i feel like i couldn't come forward and say that and i couldn't come out and say that because i just didn't cuss out a 19 year old so what do i look like going from cussing out a 19 year old uh, 18 year old to cussing out somebody that's disabled like i'm gonna look like the fucking victim and the fucking villain like so i just keep all of this stuff to myself and at this point um i'm just like bottling it up and i'm getting i'm getting madder and madder like a little bit so one day she come in the house like she come in the house and she like um you're gonna have to sign a new contract my mom's a lawyer and she said this contract is stupid and you need to sign a contract and i'm like why if your mama a lawyer would you even sign a contract if you didn't run it by your mama like basically what i put on a contract is that i had 90 days to move out and she had to give me my half of the deposit in the first month's rent half that she owed me or whatever um no she had to give me the whole deposit back and she had to give me the first month's rent or whatever because she owed me that money um because i paid the deposit to the house and we both living in it and you basically living in it and i'm just sleeping in the living room on a air mattress that won't stay inflated like it don't even make sense and it ain't even about sleeping on the air mattress it's about the fact that you literally took the room she took the closets she took the room like i have this little corner when i'm in the bathroom like it's just always an issue it's it's bugs like it's just like too much like it's just this janky part of town like it just didn't make sense um it was close to downtown but it wasn't downtown i don't know if it's called los felix i still don't know what the area is called i really only went past it like one time for the rest of the four years that i was there so yeah i ended up running a contract and one of my guy friends had came and he was gonna come live in la um because he worked at the airport or whatever and so me and him went looking for apartments one day um and uh, also another story i want to share just to like attest to her character one time her friend was there and her friend had she had this like brown flannel from the thrift store and her friend was like can i wear this and she was like yeah but don't take no pictures in it and now i'm the type like like i said i don't like a bully so i was like why would you tell her she could wear it if she can't take no picture in it she was like i don't want people to think we sharing clothes i said it's a brown shirt like so wet like i'm not the type of person that's like my friend can't wear this like if she can't take a picture in the deal why are you y'all literally going to take pictures like you basically saying no bitch you can't wear it i'm like either saying no she can't wear it but saying she can't take a picture in it to me it's kind of like a little bit like mean girlish and she was she ended up telling me like oh the reason that i'm so mean to her is because um i got into a fight and she let me get like jumped by these girls so come to find out like she be starting shit and she started some shit with some girls and they beat her ass and the girl didn't do nothing because she started it like in la you will go to jail i'm not doing nothing either now mind you i will i will jump in for my friend right around but yeah bitch if you always start shit <sighs> don't start no won't be no so i guess they still friends because she really ain't got no other friends but it was just like i don't know i just felt like i started to realize her character was not it, it was not like a she was not a good person so yeah she ran in the house that day screaming and yelling about how i need to sign a new contract blah 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 and i'm like i'm not doing nothing her mom's on the phone like telling me i'm a demon cussing me out like calling me all out my name and i just go in the bathroom and i lock myself in the bathroom and i just like like a ball and crying because I can't do nothing i can't beat this girl ass if i beat this girl ass i look like a villain a villain it's nothing it's nothing i feel like god was constantly putting me in situations where i could not defend myself because if i defend myself i'm gonna be the bad person or i'm i'm gonna miss my blessings or so i'm just like why are you doing this to me god like i don't understand why are you doing this to me so i'm gonna phone my mama just like sobbing like i don't know what the fuck going on like i so i get on facebook market and i just like find these girls who renting out this room for like a thousand dollars and i end up um packing my shit up and she end up 
um i ended up she didn't give me my money so what i did was i called my bank and i made them reverse the payment on my um on my rent and my deposit and i left because that's the money you owe me so once i reversed the payment she was like um she was like um I think she still owed me 500 or either I had to get reimbursed her 500 one or the other. I might have gave her the $500 from me reversing the payment. I was like, oh, here we go, 500 to help you pay the rent because you owe the rent and the deposit now. Um, and she was modeling for a bigger company. She had, like, I was helping her a lot to tell these companies, like, stop finessing her and using her likeness as somebody who is disabled. Like, they're using your likeness. You should be getting paid way more because they're using your likeness as that type to be like have sympathy for their brand. So you should be getting more money out of them. So she started to like get more money from these brands. Like I was genuinely helping her a lot and she started to get paid more. So I knew that she could afford to like I knew she was going to be good and I didn't really give a fuck if she was or not. But I knew she was going to be good. But I ended up giving her $500 like here. Here go, here go $500 because I got my money back. If you're not going to give me my money back, I'm going to give it back. But I'm still going to give you your money that you're supposed to get back because I'm not like that. And she had... um woke up in the middle of the night like one night and i realized that she got like a it's not my place to speak on this but she just gets sick a lot let me say she gets sick a lot i'm gonna say that um uh, that's how i better um and one night this the night one of the nights after she did all the screaming and hollering and i was in the back and crying i seen her like laying on the ground like just had just had got sick um and i I was like, what's wrong? I ended up feeding her. I ended up going to get her some stomach medicine. I ended up giving her like drink or whatever, a drink or whatever, um, and just helping her. But then I laid back down like she was saying thank you and stuff, but I, I didn't I don't care. Like I'm doing this because God I I know God, like and I know what God gonna think about me if I don't do it. I'm not doing this for you. Like I'm literally doing this because God would do this. I'm not doing this for you at all. Um but that's just who I am. I'm not doing it for you. I'm doing it because it's who I am. So the next day she ended up waking up like telling me like, oh, I had this dream and God told me you one of his chosen ones and I shouldn't treat you like this. I'm like, she was so apologetic and she was crying and telling me like that she was so wrong and blah, 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 blah. But like she wasn't giving me my money back. So I ended up, now I had already did the um, reversal at this point. So I just ended up giving her her $500. Like, here go to 500 towards your thing. I'm moving out or whatever. And I had moved out because I had wrote that I could move out by October 31st. If I moved out by October October 31st, she had to give my money. I think I moved out October 15th. So I was only there for like um two months. August, September, and then a little bit of um September. I mean of October. So I move out. I move in with these white girls and white girls are white girls. They very catty. It's a lot of drama. The first day I'm up in there, it's a pad on the sink. It's a bloody pad on the sink, and I'm just like, like, you know, white girls are a little dirty. No shade. I'm messy. Y'all dirty i'm messy y'all dirty okay um sometimes just sometimes some, sometimes sorry not not racist or anything just sometimes <laughs> um but yeah so it's like a bloody pad on the scene now mind you we women it's it can happen um but i kind of just like grab some tissue and like push it to the their side of the sink like we both got sides of the sink and i just like push it because it's one two of us share a bathroom and then one i think on bathroom so I, she ended up like pushing and then she come to our room like okay like what's going on like why are we what's going on with this pad thing i'm like that's not your bad like why are you pushing that shit back to my no i end up knocking the door like what's going on with this pad shit because we steady pushing this bitch back and forth and i don't understand why the fuck you keep pushing it to my side i'm pushing it to your side she like i'm not on my period i have a skirt on I'm like, what the fuck you mean? I'm like, she's like, that's that bitch across the hallway playing games. She wants to play games. She wants us to be into it with each other so she can play you against me. She was like, she did this with the last bitch. I'm like, okay, this is not a sorority. This is not white people. I bring them back in. I'm like, I'm black. I will beat both of you bitches up. Like, I don't want to be up in no drama like this. Like, I want to tell y'all right here, right now, we're not going to do the drama shit. Even though this day lease, my name not even on this bitch. I'm just telling them, like, I will beat y'all ass because that's that's how i'm feeling especially coming from the last place so we end up not having no more drama for real um everything was cool i was only paying a thousand dollars i had a real small ass room um i just focused on my business because i had the extra money to um sell lashes and sell accessories and stuff and i would take the train down to the fashion district because i live far i live in north um north hollywood so i would walk to the train station then take the train station um take my suitcase fill my suitcase up sell a bunch of shit redo it redo it redo it redo it and i just ran it up and then i was able to my friend ended up coming and staying with me because 
she didn't have nowhere to stay now mind you i got this little ass room so she ended up just sleeping on our couch for like the last month of our lease or whatever um and then i ended up moving in with some more white girls but i don't know what happened with them i only stayed with them for like 20 days they was telling me like oh the lease was up and they didn't know the lease was up they thought their lease was gonna go another year but the landlord told them like their lease is up and um they not like renewing it with them or whatever i feel like they was lying um i feel like it was like the black white thing and it was kind of just like eh. um <laughs> but yeah i ended up moving out after like 27 days so i moved a lot when i was in la i think i moved like four or five times so then me and my friend that was sleeping on my couch we moved in and she got that lease in her name um and that was cool but like the pandemic started like right when we moved in with each other and i just feel like i'm a real like isolated like like i said fight or flight i'm flight like with all of that heaviness that was going on during that time like of the protesting covid and everything like it was just like a dark time i wanted to get off twitter i felt like people was just so dark like even this is a situation that i always say like this girl uh was like on jade away the case about like not donating money to covid like not even knowing what covid was but was talking about how she wasn't donating money to covid but she's spending money on bags and this and that and it was just like a real trying time for me where i just felt like i wanted to be off of twitter i wanted to be off of the internet so i deactivated my twitter a lot and i stayed off twitter a lot until my twitter ended up getting deleted um I, it was my intention to delete it but it ended up just getting deleted um and i was so grateful because like i was just getting to the point where i just felt like twitter had became just too much and too toxic and i feel like even though i wasn't seeing that stuff from twitter i was kind of like still seeing it from her like she would go out and protest in la and she would come and tell me about it but i really didn't want to know like i really didn't care like she would tell me about men or like different stuff and i really didn't want to know and i didn't want to care um uh, and i didn't really care but one thing she taught me was like that i have to be a friend like sometimes you might not care about stuff but you should want to listen to your friend like if they want an event to you or whatever but i don't think that i knew how to do that like i was so to myself and i kept my business to myself so much that when somebody else told me their business i kind of just would be like exhausted especially with everything that i had just went through like i was tired of opening up to people i was tired of like opening myself up to people and like she just caught me at a bad time so like we butt heads a lot and even though we was good friends we ended up like getting into it a lot and it ended up being mold in our house so we ended up moving out of there um and we was having issues with each other too but it ended up being mold um in the house or whatever so we ended up moving out into separate houses and she moved further out of la and i moved downtown um and so my friend he had a rental that he was subleasing now COVID getting worse and worse um my business is flourishing i made like 50k off one bag i want to say it was 25k i don't know don't quote me i don't remember how much that bag made but it made a lot i think i sold either 2500 bags and made 50k or it was somewhere around there um but yeah i made a lot off this heart bag my business was booming it was flourishing but COVID was just it was at an all-time high shipments was falling over at the port like stuff was just getting like worse and worse and worse um and it just got hard and it was getting like just too much was going on accounts was getting frozen again like i feel like when your business is booming more money more problems i feel like every time that i had more money i just always kind of had more problems i couldn't afford to pay my assistant no more with covid with the shipments missing with charge bags with like i just feel like i just have had money issues a lot in my life even though i've had money um and i don't i don't waste my money i don't spend it on bags i don't spend it on um designer things like i'm not i'm not flashy with my money um i feel like i was responsible but at the same time some of my problems just ended up being bigger than me and i didn't have the financing that like other businesses would have like i never had a business loan i never had credit cards for real um i just had my personal credit card so i didn't have business funding i was doing this all off my own accounts off me doing makeup off so when when my back was against the wall it was quickly against the wall and my finances would just collapse so i think it was one month that i missed like paying my rent one time and i wasn't my friend let me stay in his apartment but it wasn't in his name either so when i paid the rent late for a second time during COVID and I paid it it was just that I paid it late he was like uh-uh you got to come up out of here and he was also like doing like these pop-ups at my house that I didn't like because it was like his apartment technically he was like popping up and it was just like an uncomfortable feeling so I ended up having to come out of there um and I ended up 
moving in another like Facebook market apartment, which was a sublet. I sublet that apartment and that was cool. I didn't have no issues with that. That was my best apartment. Um, not best apartment, but like uh, it made me feel free, but it still made me feel like, you know, I'm paying somebody else's rent because it was a sublet. I was sublet in a lot of places because I wasn't getting a place in my name because my credit was fucked up. Um, so yeah, I still at this place. I was at peace a lot in this place, but COVID just got worse and worse. And then um, I ended up getting COVID myself. And at that point, I just was like, I quit. It's crazy because I had bought like 4K in merchandise right before I got COVID. And then after that, I quit. That 4K in merchandise sat there for two, three years. Um, I didn't touch that merchandise. I just got rid of all that merchandise before I left LA because I just was exhausted, y'all. I feel like I had ran into so many issues and I just kept like, I just kept running into issues. Once I got COVID, I wasn't working, money got lost. You know, money was, it's just like, I'm, I'm independently doing everything for myself. I never had no help. I'm always like back up against the wall, figuring stuff out. I didn't move seven times. You know how much it costs to move. I didn't did this. I didn't did that. Shipments getting lost. Orders, you USPS trucks in, in LA getting robbed. Like it just was like, damn, are all the odds against me? If all the odds against me, then you know what? Maybe I shouldn't be doing it. And I gave up. And honestly, I think looking back it was good for my mental health for me to just you know stop i needed to stop and i needed to break away from my businesses and really do it from the bottom top which is what you know i'm getting ready to do um the correct way the best way financial management accountants uh workers and all of that stuff i feel like every time i did find help it wasn't good help and then the times i did have good help i couldn't afford to pay help it was just like my back was up against the wall a lot like i really did suffer with money issues and just like help i never had good help and the stuff that was going on in my life was always just like so much there was always just so much going on in my life I, my back was just against the wall a lot and it's, it's just so crazy um but after this apartment i ended up moving in my apartment which will be my first apartment that i ever stayed in for longer than a year i stayed here for two years my lease was just up when i left la and came to mexico um staying in there for two years like it was crazy because i had never been stable in my life so like at this point i'm turning 23 no i think i'm 25 at this point yeah um i'm turning 25 um i finally stable like I'm finally, you know, doing good for myself. I'm fine. I'm, I'm older than 25. 26, 27, 28. I'm 28 right now. So I just turned 26 because I moved in November. So yeah, I moved in this house. I'm 26 years old. Like I'm a grown woman. I'm at peace. I'm not, um, I'm doing makeup again. I came back to makeup when I quit. Um, selling stuff because i was selling stuff that was paying my bills well i just started this i just decided to just go back to doing makeup and i had retired from makeup i had been done doing makeup for years um so i just was like i wasn't going back but then i just was like i'm gonna have to because i don't want to sell stuff no more everything you know it's out of my order at least with makeup you know it's on it's up to me to do the job or whatever so i'm just like i'm gonna do makeup and i end up like doing a lot of celebrity makeup working on tv films working on sets and stuff so i could really afford you know a different lifestyle and i got this extravaganza damn near four thousand dollar apartment and i was actually stable and i could actually afford my rent and I could afford my bills and I, I didn't have to pay my rent late for two years you know like my rent was pretty much coming out on time for the most part like the first at least a year and a half my rent was never late my rent was never late again until I got in an uber car accident but we're gonna get there <laughs> let's see So, okay, so when I live with the white girls, y'all, this, I'm backtracking a little bit. When I live with the white girls, when I um, first, um, this was like the first three months of me living in LA, y'all, I went to Ayala Fix My Life and I was about to be on TV 
y'all I was about to be on Ayala fix my life but I decided like let me fix my own life like it just was giving like they were gonna like make me look like a real evil villain they wanted to touch a lot on that situation with that little girl and like me cussing her out or whatever it just kind of making me out to be a real bad person they was asking if I was gonna harm Ayala and I didn't like how they was gonna flip that because I was on the green screen like what the fuck do you mean am I gonna harm her you know that that's kind of like a aggressive response and I could just tell what they was doing and I cried a lot in my green screen and I was angry a lot and I I just was like we gonna cut the tapes and they wanted my auntie which had cancer um to talk a lot because she was like my main you know like maternal side and I just didn't like that they kept calling her and kept trying to like get her input and stuff and it was gonna have people from my shop on the show like it was gonna be really messy and I just was like I don't want that to be my legacy I don't want to look back and be the girl that was on Ayala fix my life and like that's what people remember me from um the girl that was so crazy that she had to go have Ayala fix her life so I was just like no you know what I'm gonna heal a different way and that's when I called everybody and like you know forgave them um and told them I was sorry well I forgave them on my own accord they didn't say sorry or anything but I told them I was sorry for all of my actions and I kind of just apologized you know to everybody okay moving forward because I just I missed that um okay so now that I'm stable so now that I'm stable, I'm starting to like unlearn survival. And I think this is like the most trying time in my life because I'm so used to being unstable, to having money issues, to surviving, to moving around, to figuring stuff out, to mismanaging. Like now that I'm finally stepping correctly, now that I finally got the groove, now that I'm finally comfortable, I'm at peace, things going right for me. Like it's like I almost didn't know what to do. Like my apartment wasn't decorated because I'm not used to living nowhere for this long. Um, I, I still felt anxiety like it was going to be an eviction notice on my door. Even though my rent was getting paid on time, I still had anxiety about getting the rent money. Even though it, it took nothing for me like to get the rent money. Like everything was good. I was in a good position. Like my bills was always getting paid. Like there was nothing wrong. Like I was, life was good. Like the only thing was that, you know, I didn't have a car or whatever. I don't have a license um and it, it's not that bad because in LA there's nowhere to park <laughs> um so it just you know it wasn't that big of a deal yeah I just felt like I was almost like too comfortable but also like nervous like I was laid back and I wasn't doing anything I wasn't focused on my business y'all always know me to be like real business savvy but nothing about me was business savvy anymore it was just straight makeup 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 and I do not like doing makeup if you know me you know I do not like to do makeup but all I was doing was makeup um and yeah I just kind of got too comfortable and just got too like lax in that so I end up getting into the car on May 19th to go to my friend's birthday party I have a big community of friends in LA I have a big just like friend group um I really love LA it feels like home to me that's why I've been there for four years um and I get in a uber to go to my friend's birthday party on May 19th 2023 and I get in a car accident uh, it's 2024 right yeah on 20 May 19 2023 and we get in a car accident in an uber um I fly I don't I had just took my seatbelt off because we was about 300 feet away I fly forward um my backside gets messed up from when I fly backwards when the, when we hit the brakes because I flew forward and then I flew backwards once we hit the brake or when we smashed the car rather maybe the impact I don't know if we actually hit the brakes um yeah, so I flew forward and then I flew back. So I ended up with like a spinal injury. Um, I ended up with like cysts and stuff in my wrist. Like my wrists were hurting. I ended up like not being able to pick stuff up. And this just like, it came after a time, after a year where medically I had gone through so much. Um, I went through so much I'm not gonna speak on, but something I can speak on is I had like 12 cysts on my ovaries. So I was just in a lot of pain every day. Um, I had already was just feeling weak and I had just went through something spiritually and I had just left a situation with my almost second boyfriend. He wasn't my boyfriend, but like a situation and he ended up just like ghosting me um, after one of his after one of his um, cousins died and he just kind of like tapped out and started doing drugs and it was just like okay well I obviously can't mess with nobody that's doing drugs. So it just kind of just I don't know it was a weird time in my life. 
and after I had a car accident I couldn't do anything like I couldn't lift a bottle like I couldn't go get groceries for myself like everything was so hard but I didn't have anybody but myself and it just started to really affect me I was so mentally depressed and I had been so sick that year I started that year off for COVID then I had the flu then I had then I was just sick then I had cysts on my ovaries then something else happened now I'm in a car accident like so it was just like so much mentally um medically and like physically and I just felt like here we go again like it just felt like i was fighting for my life i was so depressed i was ready to just be done um i started to run my credit cards up because i couldn't work and i'm so used to i had to cancel all my appointments i had to send a lot of money back i had to send thousands of dollars in deposits back um because i, I made i charged 250 for a face that's just that's just the makeup plus the travel fee that's due up front like i had to send a lot of money back like thousands of dollars worth of appointments that were planned out in the future because i would be booked in advance and i had to send it back because i couldn't physically do any makeup um so my struggle started again my anxiety started again um i was able to pay rent but it was always late um i stopped paying my light bill after they sent me like a five hundred dollar um allegedly i don't know who stopped paying it like but i stopped paying my life after they seemed like a 500 dollars light bill like elliot had just got on some weird shit my light bill went from like a hundred dollars to 500 and i'm just like this the same air this the same refrigerator this the same and until you fix it like i said I, one thing about me when god wants me to stop paying the bill he sent the error when he tell me stop he sent the error now i'm gonna have to pay that money when i go back but I ain't paid a chin. I'm just be honest. I ain't paid that motherfucker. Um, but yeah, I paid all my my Wi-Fi, my rent, my uh, well, I ain't had no water. That came with my um the Wi-Fi and the water, all that stuff was with my rent. So it was almost like four thousand dollars. So I was able to pay my four thousand every month, but it wasn't on time. I might be paying my rent on the tenth. I might be paying my rent on the fifteenth. I might have a late fee, and that's all of because of an accident. That's not my fault. It's not because I was being irresponsible. But after a while, I ended up going through my savings and it was like I, I had to at some point I had to start charging my rent to my credit card and to get my money off my credit card. I was sending this cash out. So I'm paying three percent there and then paying all this money from paying for a debit card and not paying for like it was just a lot or having to cash it out from cash out and then wait on the days for going to bank account like it just became a lot and i feel like i'm right back in this predicament so my anxiety got bad my depression got really bad and i just felt like i was fighting a battle again i was crying every day i was so sad because i couldn't help myself i didn't have nobody to help me it was i was too weak to cook i was too weak to do anything i was laying with a neck um i had to lay with a neck pillow every day i still have to lay with a neck pillow every day to this day um I couldn't sit up without a neck brace like there was nothing that I could really do and I sat in the house for months I don't think I went outside until August um so from May to August is when I finally started to feel cool enough where I could sit up for a little while but I couldn't sit up for long like I couldn't just be it was easier to stand than it was to sit because it was just so hard to sit and I had a shakes and I couldn't pick up anything. I wasn't drinking liquor because I couldn't hold the cup for long and it would just end up dropping. Like it was just a lot. Um, and around August, I just ended up getting like real, real, just like closer to God. Like um, I already was close to God and I was going to church even when I couldn't sit up and I would go there and like my neck would be hurting so bad. But I would go to church even when, you know, I really couldn't sit there, but I would just ask God for the strength. And I was just getting closer and closer and closer to God and trying to just understand like why these things keep happening to me and like why I'm always in these predicaments and why do I work so hard but I never like get to feel like the reward and why do I always do things for others but nobody does things for me like I was just like in a questioning season and like just really trying to understand like why is my life like this because I feel like I, I do so much good in reality like behind closed doors without filming it without spreading it without seeing what i'm really doing i do so much good behind the scenes but i feel like people only know me to be like evil and malicious without even knowing like my side of the story or anything that's happened to me and i just was kind of like questioning god like why god like why am i constantly going through this stuff like why am i at the point now where i can't even afford my rent like why am i at the point where i can barely afford because groceries got up to like three four hundred dollars and it just was getting bad 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 like i'm just like it's like taking everything out of me you know like to just be here and my lease was ending up my lease was about to end and it was like it was time to renew my lease and i'm like why would i renew a lease if i can barely afford it you know but i also don't want to move nowhere because i could barely 
you know, I could barely sit up. So I don't know. I just kind of just gave it to God. And I was just like, I'm going to give it to God. At first, I was real stressed. And I was telling my friends I was depressed. And like, I was telling them I had no money. And that's the thing about me. I tell my friends, like, when I don't have money or when I can't make ends meet. And I know that people like a come and try to throw that in your face. But I just be being honest. I just be speaking my truth. And a lot of my friends ended up telling me they pay rent in month. months. You know, like, during a time where I was paying rent for them two years, people had COVID relief. I never filled out for COVID relief because I couldn't afford my rent. But most people wasn't paying rent. I was sitting there paying it while everybody was getting their money back from COVID relief. But I just had so much anxiety around like rent and stuff and being able to afford my rent. Like I just wanted to pay my own rent. But by the time I couldn't afford my rent, COVID relief was over. So for a year and a half, nobody was paying rent and they were stacking up their money and they was doing PPP loans. And I did none of that. And now I feel like, dang God, like why, why I'm the one to get the short end of the stick when I'm doing everything right and everybody else, you know, playing by their own rules. And I'm st and I still end up in this situation. Like I don't understand why I work so hard and I'm always in these fucked up situations. So I just questioning God, questioning God. But I'm going to church and I'm just like listening and I'm just a lot of stuff is just like t it's just like also on point every message just felt like it was for me i knew that i wanted to get baptized around um after my birthday for my birthday um i was studying real hard during this time for like my real estate exam and i mean i was having all like my eyes was hurting um my neck was hurting i was like three pillows behind me because i have to finish i get in a car accident when i'm almost done with you know doing my stuff for my real estate but i have to finish by a deadline i got a deadline of like june so i have to finish or whatever so i'm like on the computer um and i already was sick and all of this stuff i think it was, i think my dad i was like july or something but um i'm just doing all of this to finish my real estate school like and i'm in all of this pain and like it was just a lot going on but i ended up finishing real estate school and i ended up taking the exam on my birthday so that was like my little birthday gift to myself was taking my real estate exam um and paying for my exam and getting my certificate and everything and that day was crazy too because i didn't find out i passed like the night because the machines was down it was just like, like god why is everything against me you know like i was just like dang but i had prepared to get baptized at the end of that month so i fasted for the first time um i fasted and i just asked god for some clarity um and during that time when i asked god for clarity it wasn't revealed to me yet that i was gonna leave um it wasn't until after i was baptized that god revealed to me that it's time to go um you just wash yourself free of you know your sins and you know, cleared your sins and la is a real demonic and dark place and it, it'll it pull you right back into sin and if you want to be clear from the sin and you want to you know do the work on yourself and get back to who you are i think that it's going to be time for you to leave because this year i'm going to be exposing a lot and i don't think you need to be here for that and i don't think you need to take that on i feel like you've already gone through so much and i don't want you to have to go through and i'm letting god speak to speak through me right now um and i don't want you to have to go through anything more than you need to to get to the next level so i make a decision um maybe october that um i'm gonna go and i'm gonna leave and i'm gonna go to mexico and i book my ticket and i don't even have a passport but i know that i'm going to mexico and i book my ticket and i apply for a I um, hit this boy up that get you passports quick mark on um, Instagram and I get my passport and it was expensive. It was like $300 just to get it expedited plus to pay the fee. And I was just like, damn, like this hits me. The 300 just hits me. Then you still got to pay for the passport. But as I was just like overwhelmed with where all this money was going to come from, everything just was working out. Like when I went to go get my passport, this man paid for my passport it was just so crazy like he paid for my passport i met this man right before i left that paid for like my bags at the airport like um he paid for leo flight no he paid for leo flight i paid for my bags he paid for leo's flight at the airport um it was just like a lot of things was helping me he took me to the airport so i didn't have to end up um paying for like a 70 hundred dollar uber with a cat and all of that stuff um it just was like it just really worked out um for me like everything started to align and i could just tell like this was my 
not a decision of mine but it was god's will and that he was pushing for me to leave i went out a couple times after i had got baptized and my spirit was just so different i could just definitely feel like i didn't want to be outside no more like my friends be outside and i love my friends but y'all live in la they do drugs they do this they do that and i just like i drink um before i don't really don't drink that much no more but i would drink and i would get drunk and i was even in a club one time with no shoes on this nigga uh the cat in the right hair is a problem but i was even in the club I was even in the club one time with no shoes on like I have lost my marbles like I just realized after I got baptized that I needed to change a lot of my ways and I needed to be like really you know focused on God and focused on me and my journey with God so I just kind of like really did a 360 so for the last 90 days that I was in LA I did a productivity challenge it was like the last 60 days I think 30 of the days was in Mexico um but I did a productivity challenge where I challenged myself to just be productive for 90 days and to kind of like change some of my um, habits and it really did work it changed a lot of my habits where I just felt like I had to get up and I had to be more active and I had to like get more stuff done and it just became a routine and I feel like I got a lot done my content got better my energy got better like my attitude got better I went to church every Sunday um, I just was like a lot proud of myself um and I don't know I just was like I just felt like a peace within me um and yeah it was kind of like hmm maybe you know maybe things do happen for a reason a lot of people told me that when the accident happened and I just was like didn't want to hear that but I think like it really did push me to end up coming to Mexico and taking a break from America because everything was being inflated and I feel like I couldn't afford to live in America with me not being able to work from the accident or whatever but I was starting to go back to work because I was getting like pain injections and stuff I was starting to go back to work but I just felt like the work that I was doing wasn't going to catch up with the rate that the economy was going and that I also just needed to leave like don't get me wrong I could have very well stayed in LA and still pay LA rent because I was starting to get better like I was able to move around I was able to work again um I just would have to sit down after a while um but yeah it's just it just wasn't I just don't think God was calling me to stay there like LA is my home and I will be returning to LA but like I just feel like LA needs to be purged and I needed to go walk on a new journey and I feel like now that I'm here I do understand why I had to leave so I'm gonna push to push all this Mexico in here it's just gonna be a long video so I get to Mexico I'm so emotional I really do understand like the car accident really pushed me and really ended up you know pushing me to get to Mexico um and I'm just sad though like I'm overwhelmingly sad like I'm happy but I'm, at the same time I'm sad when I get here I get really sick I end up spending a lot of money I think I spent like five thousand dollars my first month coming here I thought Mexico was a little cheaper and it's really not that cheap like it was cheaper because I mean I spent four four bands just on rent you know so five thousand with moving with a flight with a cat flight with suitcase with rent with this with food with that that was not bad but you know it was still a lot of money um and it kind of depleted my savings that quick i think i had like 10 bands and i was like oh well there goes half of it um and so the money just started coming quick my phone messed up so then i had to pay for a phone and this happened and this happened and this happened like stuff just started happening i was like okay god it's happening again like everything is under attack i just feel like sometimes i just come under attack and i think all god wants me to do is like stand my ground and like believe in him and have faith in him that he'll turn things around and that he's in control and i think when i get in that mode where i'm just like standing still and having faith that's when things just clear up but when i get nervous and when i get anxiety filled and stuff that's when stuff just keep piling on because i'm not trusting in god and i'm not having faith in god and i was learning these things as i got here and everything was being made clear to me because i'm isolated at this point i'm isolated with god and i understand that he brought me out here to be just with him and to draw near him and to understand why he does certain things and why i keep on having situations a lot of the situations that i was in had to do with me taking care of people me putting other people first me not putting myself first you know even that last relationship I was in with that guy I was paying for everything I was doing everything so that didn't when it came to my savings being depleted it was depleted even faster because you was you was messing with your savings by taking care of somebody you shouldn't have been taken care of and I was doing it again and I feel like God even when I got was getting sick like 
you were sick because I needed you to look at certain stuff a different way. You 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 disgusted that somebody not here, you know, taking care of you. Even though he took care of me a lot, but like it was just certain things that would disgust me about him when I was down and sick, when I was realizing stuff, when I would get up and I would realize, oh, the living room a mess, and I've been in the room sick, or like you know, different stuff. Anyway, um, so I struggled a little bit when I first got here. Um, the Nigerian man that I met, he did pay my rent for like two or three months. I don't remember. It might have been like two. Um, and then he stopped, which is annoying. But it was okay because by then I could afford my rent. So I was like, God, thank you. Okay, God, I appreciate you with the assist. However you can, you know, a man or whatever. I'm not one of them girls who me and pay their bills. I typically pay my own bills. But I was lucky enough to experience it for a little while. He did pay my rent for a couple months, you know, so it was cute it was cool and it was what i needed but since then um honestly i've been good honestly even the second month that he paid my rent i was good i think it was just one month that i kind of struggled here and that was like the second month because i had just relapsed so much of my budget on coming here and it was so much stuff that i needed import fees like it was just a lot of stuff that moving out the country i don't think i prepared for um but then god just kind of i kind of just cried out to god i literally just cried out to god i got on my knees and i cried and i told him i cannot suffer anymore i cannot do it anymore i'm tired of suffering i'm tired of going through all of this stuff like god i cannot do it god please just just please like show up in my life and like i will follow you but i just need you to show up for me take my hand and like drag me along the way because i cannot suffer anymore and honestly the the path was clear god cleared the path like i still have been going through stuff but like he cleared the path not my camera finna die i don't have a clue where i left off at but i would just assume i was talking about coming to mexico um and when i like getting here so yeah so um this story has been so long y'all i'm so sorry like this is like episode type stuff <laughs> so um i'm here and honestly god just starts to like let me enjoy life like i finally get to mexico and i feel like i finally start to like enjoy life like i get to go on resorts i get to relax i get to eat for free i get to drink for free like I'm honestly finally like living like I don't have to stress about money or bills like only that first month like was I kind of like stressing but when I let it go and I cried it out and I gave it to God like he truly did like order my steps and put everything in order and I think my whole life all God has been trying to get me to do is to depend on him and nothing else and to focus on what he wants me to focus on and not other people or signing up for these things but I do also feel like God used me for certain people and it just kind of was what it was and I just had to get the short end of the stick which is fine because I know that I'm about to come into something that is like my benefit from everything that I've done in my life um but my time here in Mexico it's been cool like I really just spent a lot of time in prayer like I read my bible a lot um I read my bible the most I've ever read my bible this year um than I've read the bible in my life I probably read more the bible this year than I've read in my life um I spent a lot of time watching sermons i fasted um i did the daniel's fast like i've definitely gotten closer to god um i can hear god clearer um i knew i know that my next step is thailand going to asia and that's just gonna bring me full full circle through everything i went through i feel like even like my mismanagement with my businesses and stuff like i'll be able to build my business from the very ground up and i think this time everything is gonna i know this time like everything is gonna work out for the better and everything that i went through in these last few parts like it'll come full circle and i'll end up like coming out on um the other side of the mountain i feel like like i'm at the tip top of the mountain and i'm like that i had to climb up and i finally get to like just be on top like in wind and the shelters up there and the foods up there and i'm safe and the helicopter about to come and take me off the mountain and take me to the island that's how i feel um i definitely feel like my purpose has been revealed to me again even though it's a purpose that i kind of always knew to be true like it's just been like <sighs> yeah this piece of hair 
it's just been like reiterated to me in a way that it's just like so divine like and I wanted to make a video about this but like I pretty much have like a PowerPoint presentation of like my life and what I wanted to look like my goals and everything and I, I'll make that video because I do think it's important for me to share that um I just be real secretive about my stuff but like I've just gotten closer to God and I really just hear him and like sometimes I just cry out to him and I just try to pray more something that I really struggle with was prayer but through my isolation I've learned that I have to pray like even this past week because it's time for me to go to Thailand I leave to Thailand in two weeks and I always get like this nervous sense because this time with me leaving from Mexico to Thailand this is one of the first times in my life that I'm leaving you know like it's always been on my own will but I don't have no unpaid bills I don't have no str I'm not struggling you know if I wanted to stay in Mexico I would be good you know like um my lease was well, my lease is up um at the end of this month but like I could renew it if I wanted to like it's just a free will decision and it's a decision that I feel like God is calling me to I feel like God is calling me to move every time but it just feels different this time I feel like I'm about to step into a new life that I'm about to reach so many goals that I've always had planned in my life to accomplish um I just think that like I don't know like this is my time my time is here my time is now I'm about to completely boss up everything I went through nobody can use it against me because I put it out there I've released it I've admitted to it um I'm powerful enough to not feel judged by it I know it's gonna be hard for me you know watch this back and then put it on the internet but I put it out there it's my truth nobody can hold my truth against me I'm the one telling y'all my truth you know um I'm healing you know I'm I feel good God is just like he is in, he is right here he is right here um he is just in my body and the spirit just flows through me these days and these last few weeks this, this is my point i was just real depressed because i just get so nervous you know to leave places like i moved out the country but now i'm moving off the continent like i'll be 24 hours away from my family you know and i i, I don't see my family but once a year anyway but it's just a big difference you know when you on the other side of the world real language barriers real you know a different world but i just feel like i have always been down to face adversity i've always faced adversity and i feel like my life has prepared me for the adversities in life but i feel like even though i could face so many adversities i'm not i feel like this is about to be the most peaceful period in my life that i'm just about to flourish so much that my inside out is just about to change so much because it has changed i've already been met with that change and i just feel like god is about to carry me like through this whole process and that everything is just going to be beautiful and that the struggles that i had in mexico that i won't have in thailand with like the physical assaults that i've um experienced here with like the um you know people don't want americans to be here and stuff i don't think i'm gonna experience that thai love thai people love americans um and i just think it's gonna be a different experience and i'm gonna love it and i feel like everything that i've gone through in my life has pushed me to get to this moment i really feel like god kept me god kept me so i wouldn't let go his mercy kept me so I wouldn't let go. Yeah, that's my song. That's one of my favorite songs. I almost gave up. Okay, that's one of my favorite songs. Um, it gets me through a lot. Um, but yeah, I feel like God kept me, and I'm so grateful that God kept me because I just told y'all four hours of stuff that I went through, stuff that I brought on myself, stuff that I that dealt with, adversities that came up in life, problems, and I really didn't even tell y'all to half. Like I really told y'all a summarized, um, double spaced fine version of like what really happened but i could have definitely told y'all way more but this would have been a 14 hour documentary you know like one day i'll be able to tell my story but that was just like the summary of the things that i just needed to get out and needed to express about my testimony and honestly i'm just so grateful to god i feel like this last couple of minutes i just want to talk about how grateful you know i am like being baptized was one of the greatest things i ever did i'm so glad that my mom reserved that 
for when I was older because I really did get to understand it and it really did mean a lot to me to be washed of my sins um, and being dipped in that water and just coming out of that water and making new decisions and forgiving myself and feeling like a lot of stuff washed away and having a new body a new spirit that's kind of how i felt um and after that anything i did that wasn't in the will of god just disgusted me and made me feel dirty made me feel unclean so i just didn't want to you know like um deal with certain things um i feel like i had a really lustful spirit like i said i felt like i was i wasn't like a like um three or four or nothing but i feel like i engaged in sexual acts more just because i feel like i was hypersexual ever since i had got sexually assaulted um and especially in la in that culture it's a it's a sex money drugs culture so i do feel like i had more sex in la than i've ever had in my life combined because it's nothing to do there but have sex get money and do drugs and my drug of choice was alcohol but it was still other options and i just was i'm glad that i have you know enough enough willpower and enough um I, I don't subject to um peer pressure so i'm glad that i am how i am and i was built how i was built because la is a place that you could easily get lost and i'm glad that i didn't get lost and i instead took a route where i just was so bored because i wasn't getting into the things that other people get into even within the industry i feel like a lot of people like it's all coming out now a lot of people do these sexual favors and do all of this stuff and don't get paid and all of this and it's coming out but i never accepted that for myself and sometimes i used to feel like well why are other people getting these opportunities and i'm not but when you realize that people get these opportunities because they they get treated bogus they doing stuff for free you know i'd rather stand on who i am and my talent and get paid for what i'm worth and do the things that god you know has for me to do and i feel like i stay down a lot like i feel like i am the definition of stay down to come up the definition of get knocked down nine times and get up ten i went through so much and i i feel like i've always had to take the back seat take the back seat take the back seat get punched get punched get punched and nobody you know sees when i'm hit only when i strike back and i didn't strike back as many times as i was hit but people still made a fuss out of the times i hit back but i just feel like all of that is just like it's getting cleared it's cleared already it's cleared already and it's a new path it's gonna be a path of love and lights and success and good money management like i even got like a i when i got here i learned how to balance my finances um i know how to make a budget and i'm gonna be very much more keen to paying attention to that in asia versus here i was kind of like working but in there there i'm not gonna be working um with makeup and stuff i was working here doing makeup and stuff so allegedly <laughs> um so i i didn't get a lot of time but i did like make my own finance sheets i got real organized i planned out my life i made powerpoints about my life my notes are organized you know like i just have all these ideas god spoke to me i journaled more i spent more time with god i watched my sermons more like i feel like i have been made into a completely new person that like literally you're just walking with God and I feel like this walk with God is going to be my best walk yet. I'm not in a relationship. I'm not dating. I'm not having sex. I'm not doing anything lustful. Um, I'm not doing sexual stuff. I'm not listening to as much secular music. I still love R&B and I want to write music. So I'm still like having a battle with that. But I love to listen to Christian R&B and I love to listen to Christian hip hop and um, I love music. So I feel like I always listen to all music, but I definitely can't listen to a lot of stuff too much pee popping and too much and too much i gotta turn off but it's still some stuff that i really love and it's usually the melodies and r&b and it will have some secular type of music like i'm not i'm not uh you know one of those christians that is like no i can't listen to any of it i just try to limit myself and i just keep god at my forefront even when i listen to these things because i do feel like i will end up being in a career too where i end up writing music or i end up like doing something with music um so i do want to leave that avenue open until god like clear you know clearly tells me what my lane is whether it's writing christian music or it's writing r&b but i really see myself writing r&b um music but yeah i just have a lot of great dreams and goals for myself and i really feel like you know i'm glad that god like pushed me out of la because i feel like i had just gotten too too comfortable and now that i'm in mexico it just woke me up and woke like my motivation back up inside of me and just made me want to like um 
focus on what I needed to be doing and like where I needed to be and like I'm so ready to get to Asia because I have so many so many plans um and I don't know I just feel like my reward is here and I'm about to be able to smell my flowers and I'm about to get the awards that I deserve and even if I don't I feel like God is going to give them to me you know like and that's what I mean that God's about to give me you know what I deserve and I'm thankful in advance I cried to him the other day I think it was last night and I because I just like I said I was depressed for these I just get in this like it's not even depression because I'm not sad or anything it's just like a, a weird phase where when I'm about to do something scary I just get like stuck and I feel like I'm about to go to the next level and something want to pull you back and it wants you to do all the stuff that you used to do so I feel like I was just laying around um I refused to cook I refused to get up out the dark I refused I slept all day I was just sleeping around um and I just feel like something was trying to demote me back to the old me because I'm about to go to a new level it want to pull me back and I just told God like I cried out yesterday and I just told God like when I wake up tomorrow like I want to be different I want to be you know I want all of this to release I rebuke it and today I filmed four four hour videos I've cleaned up um I washed clothes you know I, I did things that I needed to do that I couldn't do yesterday that I couldn't bring myself to do all week and sometimes I feel like I don't get a lot of stuff done and I'm hard on myself but like I work a lot so I worked a lot and then I slept for like a week straight like really just was sleeping but I slept on the couch I wouldn't sleep in my bed like I didn't make my bed the covers was out the dryer and I never put them on the bed to the point where I just ended up rewashing them because they never went on the bed um it was just like yeah I was just like I just get in these like stuck modes and sometimes you just gotta pray you just gotta ask God to like rebuke procrastination and rebuke um, sadness and depression like I watched a TikTok and this lady was like we got to get back to rebuking and I really do be rebuking stuff now and I feel like they really do help me um, just rebuking stuff and not allowing the enemy to you know think he he doing something because you not. but yeah um, I don't know I hope like y'all understand me a little bit more um, I don't know I hope y'all do yeah but even if you don't I'm happy that I got this out um this is my testimony um it's my walk with God this is you know what my isolation period brung out I think it just brung out my purpose and got me a closer relationship with God and I think that he drew me out here in Mexico to just be with him and to just get a clearer understanding and now that I have that understanding that I didn't have six months ago when I came here I had an understanding but it wasn't this clear um now I can hear him clearly I can identify his voice um I watched a a, a collection of videos called voices and I'll tag the um i post a video um of the preacher i want to say his name is jerry flowers jerry flowers he has a series called voices and it's just really good and that helped me a lot too and honestly like this isolation season god drawing me out was just like so worth it like my life is so different like crying out to god and just asking god like to to just just take it all away take everything all the heaviness all the back and forth all the just being attacked to just take it away from me like don't get me wrong I was attacked even more you know during my fasting period during that time but I think that God just was asking me that to just put things on him and when I do get attacked just give it to him don't react just give it to him and it's very hard for me you know it's very hard for me as somebody who has like has had so much anger inside of me to live a life where I don't react to things to live a life where I'm not talking s all the time where I'm not you know being reactive where people saying stuff to me and I'm not saying nothing back you know it's hard um but God don't give us the easiest tasks all the time you know sometimes things are hard and you have to show him that you're willing to still follow him no matter how hard it gets and I feel like that's what I've been doing and like I said I feel like I'm in my reward season so yeah I just want to say God I'm so thankful for you and I say this I say this to God a lot but I don't say it enough like I'm so thankful for this journey I really like I don't know how a person can be excited about life like with everything I just said but the reason that I'm excited is because God got me through all of that God continues to pull me through things he continues to save me he continues to pull me out of all of those things most people with the cars I was dealt with gave up or would have been 
you know, so shameful. Like I have been shameful of myself, but at the same time, like everything I just told y'all, like for me, I got through it. Like whether it's evictions, whether it's having to move out my crib, whether it's, you know, letting people harm me and not doing nothing back, like losing a battle. I feel like I'm, I might lose the battle, but I'm not losing the war. I feel like at the end of the day, like God fights my wars for me and I got God on my side. So it might look like I lost the battle, but in the end, like God got the final say and I feel like my life is going to turn out how it was always supposed to turn out. And a lot of the lessons that I've learned a lot along the way are going to continue to push me forward. And I'm just glad that God gave me confidence and that he gave me wisdom and that he gave me discernment. And that he made me strong and that he made me beautiful and that he made me smart and that he made me business savvy you know and that he gives me the tools that even when i do mess up i can learn from my mistakes and i don't have to hide and be scared to make a mistake i feel like a lot of people throw your mistakes in your face and i know that it's gonna come a time where this video will be chopped up and people will throw the things i say in my face and it's okay because i know that everything i've gone through i can fully say that it was for a reason and that I've learned from it and that God got me through it and as long as God can get me through my stuff I don't think anybody can judge me for what I've been through um yeah life ain't easy and it definitely wasn't easy for me um I wasn't just handed a lifestyle um I had to work really hard for my lifestyle and I'm just so appreciative to God yeah um yeah I love God yeah <laughs> Jeremiah 29 11 um God has a plan for you a plan for you to prosper and not to harm you and just know that if I can make it through all of this you can make it through anything and trust 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 that it's way more that I would just like rather take to my grave you know um or I'm not comfortable sharing it but that was just like you know the the summary of it all but I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you guys have any testimonies that you want to share with me in the comments or if you can relate to anything definitely leave it down in the comments i hope you got to watch all four episodes of my testimony i can't believe this is four hours long if you rocked with all four parts please let me know you watched all four parts because i definitely gotta like show you some love um but yeah, I thank you guys so much for watching my testimony and hopefully I can upload this day by day. So every part should be up already because this is the last part and thank you guys for watching. <laughs>